Just how dangerous or deadly is COVID-19? COVID-19, the COVID-19 coronavirus pandemic. This pandemic has become a crisis of trust. Over this month, we've seen the numbers of people falling ill. Over 5 million people have officially fallen victim to the virus. Everybody must stay at home in all circumstances. Against non-essential travel globally. It's been over three years since I've last left the country and it definitely hasn't been the same. France has a special part in my heart because it was where I caught my first ever pike and my favourite fish of all time, the sea bass. So when I was told three months in advance that we were going again, I was already getting prepared. Temperatures I got, 20 something degrees. <laughs> No sooner had we arrived, I began unpacking and went off to explore. We arrived during low tide, so this gave me an opportunity to look for rock pools and marks to fish in the evening. So before I bet bass fish, I gotta find some marks. No sucks, I'm so serious. It's definitely the area I'm looking for there. As you can see, there's a lot of kelp and oh, that's it now. And that's exactly what the bass will be hiding in. And look at all the shape of these gullies. They, they cross up, so they chase the bait fish in here. That's the sort of mark I'm looking for. So the wind is behind me. So yeah, this is what we to start this evening. Before I started, I talked to a nearby angler about where to fish, and he had suggested a few places for me to start off. Did you? Catching any? What? Catching any? Uh, sea bass? Yeah. Sea bass? Yeah. yeah. All here, is it? Yeah, you are. Sometimes uh, over there. Yeah. Uh, a friend uh, will touch uh, like this. Yeah. Yeah. 
that cast really well as well. Not first spot, nothing, but hey, we're starting off, and I do know I would definitely make it work. Starting off was always the hard part of fishing a new location, but I knew by the amount of water there was, this was going to be a long process. Currently, I'm just getting a good feel for this. I know it's going to take a little bit of getting used to, but slowly but surely we'll get there. I think week one will be learning, and then week two will be the execution, but we'll find out anyway. With the first week being the chance to figure out the bass, besides that in low tide, I started fishing the rock pools for all sorts of weird rock fish. Yes, here's fishing friends. I guess that's like a little small goby or something, but yeah, it's tiny. That's there. It is a little goby. That's a proper, that's a little bit of a bigger one. Another little baby, but I'm catching fish. Yes! Oh, no, that's a little goby. That's a better size. They're hiding under the rocks. It's not always about the big fish, boys. That is a stunning little goby. Oh, another one. It's another goby. That's number four. It's up so far in that yoke. Oh yeah, there we go. Oh, that's a blenny. The fish are so hard to hold. It's kind of hard to show the stripes on camera, though. Little rock. Nice size one there. Got him. He's off! Got him. There we go. That's my biggest uh, rockfish so far of this trip. And it is a nice goby. Yeah, that's my biggest, probably my PB goby. See how well he blends in with the rocks there? Well boys, so far my biggest fish of the trip and I'm actually not mad to say that because that is a good sized goby. On the old LRF with the Berkeley sandworm which I got yesterday. Look at that for a goby. Send this lovely little goby back. I think that's just a sand goby I think it's just called. But yeah, goby shad. The rock pool fishing was very fun and I caught a few new species as well. New species there boys, that's a type of blenny. Uh, he just came out from under the rock. He's got some nice spots on him. When the tide was on its way in, I would target the bass. And on this session, I ran into an angler who had caught some bass off the beach on top bars. Catching any bass? Yeah. Yeah? Do you know the spot on uh, I've only came two days ago and I tried down there mainly. I'm trying on the... Uh, surface? Yes, on the surface. Yeah, I get you. I'm gonna go white. Yeah, white. Of the, of the color of the, of the sky. That's yeah. it. But you, you can say here that's gonna be fine. Oh yeah, I'm gonna move up as well, like slowly. As it gets dark, I'm gonna keep going up. In the morning while swimming around the beach I was told to fish. I saw loads of bait fish swimming around the rocks. So knowing this I decided to go back, grab the top waters and try in that location. Oh! No way! We got a blow up! That was a big bass! I need to get to myself. Yep. Oh. Yes, we got one. Yes. What? Oh, it's a needlefish. I've never caught one of these before. 
Ooh. That first fish was definitely a bass. What are you doing? Let me put them in this weird pool. Hi right, boys, another new species for me. It's a houndfish, I think it's called, or a needlefish. But he's gonna go mental. But he's got a <laughs> I wanna hold him up to the camera, but I don't think he's gonna let me. But yeah, first ever houndfish. Alright, hold them up. There we go. First ever houndfish. Look at that mouth of teeth. That top water bite indicated that I had found a productive spot. So I returned midday fishing the crazy sand dew. Sand dew to the last bit of Oh, I had a fish, no! Yeah, I got a hiss. The fish to a hiss. Although I was missing fish, I had a pattern figured out. So during that night, I got prepared for a full morning's bass fishing. However, the Atlantic had other plans. The storm had completely messed up the game plan. Every spot I had success in was too windy to fish and the storm had brought in too much weed, turning the water black. The weather forecast didn't give me any good news either, as the storm was meant to last the whole second week, and low tide showed how bad the weed was. Any chance I had of catching a bass now was ruined. Any attempt I tried would just end in frustration, and I just ended up saying it was a lost cause. And at this moment, I'd never felt so defeated before. We even went to a pier that I know is very good for mackerel fishing, and the waves were just going over the pier like it was nothing. This meant the pier was unaccessible as it was just not safe to fish. But on the drive back, my mother noticed a lad fishing in the shallow bay that's past the harbour, and I knew there was loads of mullet in there, but I never thought of bass being in there. But looking back, it does make sense that bass would be in there. So I was down to my last day and I had to make a choice. Do I fish the beach in the 40 mile an hour winds or do I fish the shallow bay? And feeling like I had no other option, I decided to fish the bay as a last attempt. When I had arrived, I saw loads of mullet hanging around together, and I know bass will hang around with mullet, so I started casting a large topwater popper around them. A lad came around and said to me, this is a spot where a lot of bass go on high tides to feed on crabs and shrimps, so he recommended that I put on a smaller topwater, so I put on the Savage Gear Pop Walker, and I walked down the bay, looking around for any fish. There's apparently the bass here. Mine said so, so I don't know, I could just mistake them for mullet, but never know, I'll try anyway. Said they're in close. Whilst walking, I saw a large fish in the weed right in front of my feet, and I thought I was looking at a very big mullet, but I had a closer look and I saw it had a very dark back on it. And I knew a mullet had quite a light back. In that moment, I realised I was staring at a four pound bass. The bass then swelled from the weeds and turned for the popper. And in this moment, I thought the bass would either turn away or follow the popper right up to the bank and get spooked. Yes. Oh. 
Big bass. Come on. Come on. Hey, come on, dude. Don't you dare come off. <laughs> First bass in ages. Oh my god. Big bass. <laughs> Lovely. Yeah, good stuff. Big fish. Boys, it all came good in the end. That is a bass. I was literally told on the way up this is a spot where bass feed and shrimp and I literally saw this lad right next to the bank and I threw the popper and I saw him chase it and the cast after, bang, it was an unreal take my first bass in top water I'm going to put this fish back my mother would love a bass but it's the last day so I'm going to put her back in maybe just maybe we'll get another one but that is unreal I'm going to give that fish just around three and a half pounds send you back right at the end Everything was going bad on the last day. You have a bass. I need to go. I got what I came for, and I couldn't have been happier with the result, especially with it being a PB bass for me. So in the morning, we left the campsite, drove to the port, boarded the ferry, and returned home. I hope if this video has left you with anything, is that even if all odds are against you, Nothing is impossible, you just have to think outside the box sometimes. And I cannot wait to return next year to hopefully get another bass.